Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to Solasta, Crown of the Magister, by Tactical Adventures, a game which we have, of course, briefly touched on before. First, when uh, I originally backed the Kickstarter campaign that helped fund it, and then again when they released the Alpha Prototype Demo, which uh, by itself was a pretty solid, self-contained adventure. Now, uh, given that we recently touched on Baldur's Gate 3, which is also in early access, I thought it only made sense for us to revisit Solasta, which also just recently hit early access on uh, Steam and GOG. While the original prototype demo only used a single snippet of an adventure using a pre-generated adventuring party, the current early access build, just recently updated with their winter update, actually includes... Um, I believe the first 8 to 10 hours of the planned campaign, minus a few features and side quests, of course. But it also notably allows you to generate your own party of adventurers. So with that in mind, I went ahead and tapped the raiders for character concepts, used those concepts to build a party, and uh, here we are. I figure we've got a good 8 to 10 episodes worth of content ahead of us, so let's uh, jump right in and I will let you formulate your own opinions on uh, just how well assembled this particular take on the Dungeons & Dragons tabletop system might be. Though I will, of course, also uh, share a few of my own opinions as we work our way through it. Oh, but uh, before I do, real quick, I should of course thank the Raiders for their support and patience. It's thanks to fine folks like them that I can actually make videos like this one, which of course I greatly appreciate. So, thanks guys! With special thanks to Revenant, A Nerd in Warpaint, Antonio Hernandez, Matthew Holmquist, Nathan Welch Jr., and Valenrug. That said, let's get started. Now, first up, we've got our party. And, um, full disclosure here, my original plan was to actually create the characters on screen but I severely underestimated just how much choice paralysis I was going to end up running into while making them. I think I ended up spending something like eight hours doing it. Uh, I was having a hard time even deciding on which concepts to run with, because the Raiders had suggested several intriguing concepts, and we only have four slots to play with. I prefer a six-slot party, but, you know, you work with what you've got. That said, I ultimately ended up rolling dice to determine which characters would get those four slots, and then tweaked the concept slightly so they would mesh together into a semi-cohesive party. I will freely admit that um, that is not the ideal way to forge an adventuring party, but like I said, you work with what you've got. And it does make for a uh, merry band of misfits. Here's what we ended up with. Yavreth Paleblood, Marsh Halfling Ranger, and the uh, party's token warrior. I will say, um, this is a concept I actually struggled with for a while, because I had a really hard time breaking myself from the idea that a Halfling Ranger had to be dexterity-based. Uh, I kept trying to figure out how to make her a decent ranged fighter, even though she's too small, to actually use a crossbow or longbow. And eventually, I realized that in 5th edition, you can make a Halfling fighter who is focused on strength and constitution. There's really nothing in the rules that prevents you from doing so. So, we uh, ended up with what is essentially a miniature tank. While she is somewhat um, atypical for a ranger, in that she can't sneak and has no real knowledge of nature, she can at least track monsters back into the darkness which spawn them, and then beat them to death with a pair of hand axes. Future plans include, of course, focusing her on two-weapon fighting, as well as eventually picking up the Shadow Tamer package which will uh, make her all the more effective against the things that go bump in the night. Not the most subtle character, but um, hopefully effective. After that, we've got Henrik Silverstream, the uh, group's token cleric, who serves as both our uh, secondary warrior, as well as our group's primary healer, and to a certain extent as the group's backup skill monkey as well thanks in large part to the Insight Domain, which grants advantage on several academic skills. I will stress that um, his, his stats are pretty great. 
Uh, I did use rolled stats as opposed to a point by system because rolled stats were the default and uh, I didn't think to change it until I got to Henrik here and he was actually the last of the characters I built. So rather than going back and using point by to rebuild all of our characters from scratch, I just figured we'd roll with it. This is just a short run early access series. Side note, um, although he is a fairly stereotypical cleric, Henrik is also destined to become a master alchemist once he hits level 4. Next up we've got... Istvan Locke, arrogant half-elven noble and occasional wizard man. Again, fairly straightforward here, uh, given that uh, Solasta is heavily focused around vertical level layouts and unusual utility spells. I really wanted to showcase that. With that in mind, Istvan here has an assortment of utility spells. Uh, shield, Featherfall, Jump, along with old standbys like Mage Armor and Magic Missile. I will note that uh, I did not give him Detect Magic or Identify, which I would normally consider to be staples of a utility wizard's arsenal. That's because Henrik, as a cleric of the Insight Domain, already has access to both of those, so it was a bit of a lesser concern. That aside, we can always have him scribe those spells into his spellbook once we can actually track down the appropriate scrolls. Which finally brings us to Sir Dialot, our party's token rogue. Though in this case, he's obviously less the charming confidence man and more the lock-cracking, long-ranged assassin sort of rogue. Being a snow dwarf grants him a bonus proficiency in heavy crossbows, so I definitely plan on taking advantage of that. And um, I'm also planning on taking advantage of the poison mechanics that the developers just added with the new winter update. Eventually, he's also going to turn into some sort of um, wall-crawling spider dwarf, but uh, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Short term, suffice to say, he is great with mechanical stuff and um, not so great with people. Well, he's great at killing them, but I don't know if you'd really classify that as being good with people. So there you have it, our errant group of adventurers. I will freely admit it is not a selection of concepts that I would have come up with or assembled myself, but they should um, certainly keep things interesting. Once again, special thanks to the Raiders for suggesting this loose-knit band of lunatics. Let's get started. Before the Cataclysm, there were no gods on Celasta. No humans, either. Then, the rift opened. Some say it was a magical accident, or the work of an evil god. No one knows for sure. The Cataclysm destroyed the old High Elf Empire. Manakalan, they called it, and twisted the land beyond recognition. Now, only the brave and the foolish go there, in search of ancient treasures. But something is happening deep in those badlands. Whatever it is, it can't be good. Ten twenty-four AC. It is a time of political tension between the Principality of Mazgarth and its neighbors. The Legacy Council stands as a neutral organization, with representatives from all of the Eastern Kingdoms. It has issued a call for hired adventurers to bolster its efforts to explore the perilous Badlands. A valiant group gathers at the Grave Keep's Cask Inn, ready to take up the challenge. This beer tastes like donkey piss. Not that I'm complaining. 
Hope I'm not too late. Run into a bit of trouble on the way here. Sit, relax. Perhaps you'd enjoy a pint of this obnoxious ale. If you're here for the council job, get in line. Though if this Lord Caron doesn't show up soon, I may go looking for him. Another round, barkeeper. Four of your finest flagons of donkey piss, please. Looks like you've been waiting here a while. Indeed. You mentioned something about some trouble. Would you care to elaborate? Well, I was making my way here when three bandits leapt from the bushes with crossbows. They dragged me off to some decrepit prison and tossed me in a filthy cell that smelled of rat piss. Don't know what was holding the place up. I will say the uh, cutscenes are a bit rough around the edges at the moment. Um, it is important to remember this is an early access title and it is on a tight budget, but I do hope they smooth those out a bit before the game actually hits launch. You'll also notice we're obviously in the midst of a tutorial segment here. There will be one segment for each character in our party. The developers are currently considering options to let the player skip this part if they want to, but we'll go ahead and run through it. To be honest, I could use a bit of a refresher. It's been at least a month or two since my last test campaign. I'll actually be seeing a fair amount of new stuff alongside you guys. There's our tutorial on selection and movement. Pretty standard CRPG stuff. You can cycle through characters with tab or the F1 through F4 keys, or you can select multiple characters by simply clicking and dragging. Camera controls, again, pretty standard. WASD for vertical and horizontal, Q and D for rotation. I will note that you can highlight interactive objects with the Alt button. Oh, and there's our tutorial for journals. Basically where you go to uh, review your current quests and objectives. Yeah, which they're talking about right here. Though there are uh, a number of rather intriguing sections of the journal, which we'll take a look at in just a second. Oh, and right off the bat, we've got a conversation log. Always nice. And then we've got the bestiary, which tracks the uh, creatures that you encounter and fight during your travels. I'm a big fan of mechanics like that one. Pretty self-explanatory. By defeating enemies, you learn more about them. There's the Faction tab. Again, fairly self-explanatory, though uh, not fully implemented in the current build. And a Tutorial tab. And speaking of tutorials, let us uh, continue working our way through this one. Ah, there we go. Right, as this tutorial is telling us, there is no manual crouching or crawling. Your character will automatically change stance to match the context of where you want them to move. So they'll jump, climb, or crawl as needed to go where you tell them to go. Assuming they can actually reach it. There's our first interactive object, a container we can loot. Hey, and it contains a free torch, something that Henrik actually does need, because uh, as a human, he's the only member of our party who does not have some form of dark vision. Though, once we track down his holy symbol, he'll be able to cast a light spell, so not a huge deal. There's our second interactive object, a stone we can push. As it states here, sometimes those will include stat or attribute requirements to interact with. Oh. 
And that's why we needed the torch. Looks like we've stumbled across the jumping tutorial. Thankfully, something that Henrik is halfway decent at. It is worth noting that, uh, although it's not always evident, Celasta is built on a square grid, so it does lead to that awkward situation sometimes where you see things that look like ledges or narrow walkways, but you can't actually walk on them. Oh, right. I guess it would be more accurate to state that um, Celasta is actually built on a cube-based grid, given its uh, unusual focus on both horizontal and vertical movement. Every uh, square that you traverse is five feet, regardless of whether you are uh, walking normally, leaping across a chasm, or scaling a vertical surface. That can actually get pretty crazy once you start gaining access to things like spider climb or outright flight spells. In this particular case, we're looking at a much more straightforward scenario. While Henrik is not proficient with athletics, he does have an 18 strength, so he is more than capable of leaping the chasm and reaching the bonus chest. If I can get him to actually jump. There we go. Okay. I was clicking on the ledges, which weren't actually traversable terrain. Nice. Looks like that got us a free healing potion. Not something we're in a dire need for, considering um, we're not injured and Henrik is a cleric. But still, a nice find. You'll also notice that there is an alternate means of reaching the chest since this is a tutorial, but once we get to the real dungeons, um, there will be loot that is only obtainable with the use of specific spells or items, so it does pay to be prepared. Interactive pillar? Pretty obvious. Not much point in kicking that rock out of place now, but might as well be thorough. And there's our bandits. Who have chosen a very unfortunate position to stand in. guys. It's just their bad luck that this is the exploration tutorial and not the combat tutorial. Otherwise, you might have actually gotten to fight them. There's our looting and inventory tutorial. Again, fairly straightforward. If you played any recent CRPGs, you're probably going to find this pretty intuitive. Pretty standard click and drag, shift to split stacks. I will note, um, inventory management is a pretty significant part of Solasta. Oh, looks like uh, Henrik decided to equip himself. They added some more slots, too. That secondary quiver slot is definitely new. Nothing terribly exciting. Just a few basic essentials to help us on our way. Gear recovered. Bandits tutorialed to death. Moving on. Nice move. That trick with the wall. Glad you're no worse for wear. My flagon is empty of ale, and Lord Karen still isn't here. The council is likely busy with important matters of state, and we are not. So have patience. Well, let me tell you my story then. I too was accosted on the way here, but I faced my foes head on. So, what are you waiting for? Spit it out, why don't you? 
That's unfortunate. For some reason, it has chosen our rogue for the combat tutorial. All right, Kaiser, I need you to get off my mouse. Thank you. Though, um, I do notice that it's advising we run away, which is new. Maybe that's why they chose Sir Dialot instead of Yavreth, because she would have just mulched these things. Though, to be honest, I think... I mean, Sir Dialot's no slouch. He could probably take these things, too. Yeah, let's give it a shot. Alright. You can't split up your movement. Oh, look at that. We actually had a third wolf just out of sight. So even if we had run, we would have uh, still ended up surrounded. Very tricky tutorial. As far as uh, combat resolution goes, we're pretty close to tabletop here. One standard action, one movement action, and one bonus action per turn. It is worth noting that, unlike in Baldur's Gate 3, uh, they do actually classify shoving as a full standard attack action, so you cannot attack someone with your main weapon and then also shove them. Unless you have multiple attacks. That said, uh, I am kind of bummed I didn't set up for a shove attack here. Ah, the dodge action. Useful if you're in a uh, desperate situation, but in this case, we will simply murder. <laughs> Gotta say, death by tutorial is not a good way to go. Looks like we're not quite done just yet. Ah, right, and there's our uh, disengagement tutorial. Much like with shoving, disengaging an opponent requires a full standard action, so you can't attack and also run in the same turn, at least not without drawing an attack of opportunity. That stands in stark contrast to the much more um, freeform or dynamic approach that they took in Baldur's Gate 3, with their bonus action disengaging leap. Now, given that this appears to be a non-starving wolf... Oh, yeah, that thing will tear us to pieces. I think we'll take the hint and disengage. I suppose we should also interact with this giant glowing rock. guy. What a bunch of nammy pammies. You're lucky you weren't attacked by Sorax. I don't remember anyone asking your opinion. The Badlands are thick with them. Shape-shifting bastards. Never mind him. He's just another drunk scavenger. Aren't all drunks basically stupid? Sorax might be legend. But orcs are quite real, and not just in the Badlands. I stumbled across a secret settlement right here in the Principality. What? I traveled here from the east and left the main highway, hoping to save time by traversing the hills. The views were magnificent, but I should have kept my eye on the path because it gave way beneath my feet, plunging me into a Stygian darkness. Ow. 
That's going to leave a mark. <laughs> Ow. I am mildly inconvenienced by this 40 foot drop. There's our light and darkness tutorial, though largely meaningless for Istvan, since he is a half elf. That said, he does have an arsenal of illumination spells, because we are adventurers and it pays to be prepared. There are several occasions where you will want to ignite flammable objects, so it does pay to uh, keep torches handy. Or, in this case, the firebolt spell. You know what, let's go ahead and light things up a bit. Blessed are the light bringers. I could have also just tapped this light spell button, but I forgot it existed. Hmm. We've got a couple of unlit sconces here. Let's go ahead and light those up too. Just in case. Now we can get a good look at this thing. Nice. Upon my word, this is an orc hideout. The malodeur is unmistakable. I say, I found myself trapped in a veritable pit of death. This is quite inconvenient. Healing tutorial. Oh yeah, yeah, we're we're injured. Wow. <laughs> Ow. Um Well, Histvon doesn't have any healing spells, so Right, we must have a healing potion nearby. I think we'll push our luck and hold on to this. As tempting as it is to top off, an extra healing potion could certainly come in handy during our first real adventure. There they are. Discretion is clearly the better part of valor in this instance. Oh my. I am now regretting that um, frivolous light spell. That is not going to make this any easier. Of course, as a wizard, Istvan is not trained in stealth. But he does have a plus four bonus from dexterity. We'll have to hope that's enough. Oh, yeah, we're fine. Thankfully, this is, of course, just the tutorial. I think they can detect you, but they've obviously set the uh, target numbers a bit lower than normal. <laughs> I'm almost tempted to attack these things, but I don't think he's got spells prepared either. Come to think of it, um, I now have concerns because I know the final tutorial is actually the full-fledged stealth tutorial, which means Yvreth is going to end up on that one. That is going to be awkward. Obviously, the um, character selection for the tutorial segments could stand to be fine-tuned a bit. Hmm. 
It does look a bit odd at times, but I actually really like the squared off terrain. It reminds me of uh, building dungeons with my old Dwarven Forge Master Maze sets. Okay, so our only way out is still blocked by orcs, but we have a campsite, so I guess we have to wait them out. No other means of egress is apparent. Fine. I shall wait until they go. These creatures do hunt, right? Yep, there is our resting tutorial. Much like in Baldur's Gate 3 and uh, Tabletop, there are short and long rests. I believe you can take up to two short rests per day, which uh, restores a small amount of hit points plus lesser abilities, whereas uh, long rest is required if you want to fully restore your characters, including spell slots. But of course, that comes at the cost of more time and resources. And speaking of spell preparation... I guess that's why they chose Istvan for this tutorial. Let's get some rest and set his spells. Also worth noting that this will restore his full hit points, so... Yeah, you can definitely get away with saving that potion. Hmm, how do we... Oh, right, it'll... It'll prompt us to uh, set our spells once we finish resting. There we go. Now, sadly, we have more spells than we have spell slots, so... We'll have to pick one that we don't actually have prepared. Which, I think, is going to have to be sleep. The others are all a bit too useful. I will try to work sleep back into the arsenal a bit later down the line, though. There are a lot of fun uses for that one. Alright, orcs are gone, spells are set, let us be on our way. We've got one more tutorial segment left, and that's going to be a weird one. Not sure I would have slept so close to a horde of orcs. Orcs are a very distinctive stink. If Lord Karen keeps us waiting much longer, I might greet him with a dagger. We've all told a tale of our travels here. All but one of us. Yes, but I have good reason for that. It's none of your bloody business. You can't have a true friendship without trust. What are you hiding? Fine. You want to know the truth? I stopped on the way here to visit an old friend of mine and discovered he was up to his eyeballs in debt with a loan shark. Oh, that's not good. Indeed. He put up a family heirloom as collateral and wanted me to reacquire it. Because you see, I can be quite stealthy when necessary. You really can't. She is non-proficient with a meager plus two from Dex. Well, here we are in the rogue tutorial with a non-rogue character. I can't say I've had this happen in any of my previous test campaigns, but... I suppose this is the first campaign I'm playing with the new winter update, so maybe it's something new. I guess we'll just uh, keep our heads down and hope the dice roll in our favor. Worst case scenario, we'll just uh, hack a bloody swan through this lone shark's guard. Hmm. 
on the bright side, we're pretty good at tracking. Camera tutorial again. That's weird. I am fairly certain we covered that. Thieves tools, which we cannot actually use. Neat. Oh, Liam, always thoughtful. Oh, well. Oh. Well, shoot. Okay. <laughs> Let's try that again. This time, uh, I suppose I shouldn't stray so far from the wall. I was trying to follow those tracks, but the line of sight indicator did seem to imply that if we were right below him, he wouldn't be able to see us through those crenellations. Thoughtful. All right, take two. Okay, that seems to be working. Oh, but we uh, definitely should not linger. Mm. Ah, but line of sight seems to be directional, so... Now that we're behind him, he can no longer see us. Lockpicking tutorial. We're basically going to be rolling raw decks on this because we are not proficient with those lockpicks. Hey, not too shabby. Okay, there's our pickpocketing tutorial, and um, we're definitely not going to try that. I don't think we even can pickpockets without the uh, proficiency and sleight of hand. There's the guy we'd have to pickpocket if we were physically capable of it. But since we cannot, we will just slide on by. Huh, gotta say, your breath has a lot more finesse than I expected her to. Um, you know, except for that one time she stood out in the open right in front of a guard post for like five seconds. But in her defense, she was just trying that whole hiding in plain sight thing. I don't think she was doing it right. Stop. A trap. And this is where it becomes interesting. Because once again, this is a raw dex roll, so d20 plus 2. Gotta say, uh, all this subterfuge is a bit outside of Yvrath's comfort zone. She's a lot more comfortable when it comes to murdering things. But, well, see what we can do. Okay. Looks like we can't try to disarm it again, so I guess we'll just set it off. Ah! Ow. Ah, that wasn't too bad. Oh, and I spoke too soon. All right, you breath. Um, <laughs> let's take another stab at this whole master of unlocking thing. Well, look at that. Uh, 
Oh my, that is a ruby. You know, maybe that's why um, they tagged Yavreth in for this scenario. Because if Sir Dialot got his hands on that thing, he would not be returning it to Liam. Uh-oh. There you are, you filthy crook! You? What? You're drunk. Get out of here before I kill you. Think you scare me? Not anymore. A grave mistake. Ah, and this is our tutorial for plot-critical characters. Honestly, though, I'm really just glad to be moving things back into Yvrath's wheelhouse. Murder, we can do. Uh, though I will say it is strange that our only good-aligned party member is the one who was tagged for the whole home invasion and murder thing. I suppose she is helping her friend, so that's admirable. Ish. Nice. Huh, she actually maintains stealth, too. That is unexpected. Okay, I guess we will uh, hold position. He's probably fine. Are you four here to see Lord Karen? Ah, now we actually get to control what we're saying. Kind of. Depends on who's asking. Well, if you're here for Lord Karen of the Legacy Council, that would be me. So, you're not a mythical creature after all? Unlike, say, a sober adventurer? Might we ask a bit more about this quest of yours, sir, if you please? Well, I suppose it's better if you know what you're doing. What do you want to know? I suppose this is as good a time as any for a quick crash course on the setting. We hear this is a mission for the Council, but what is it exactly? Dear Moraike, you don't know. I'll try to make it simple, but you know, politics. The Council includes representatives of the most powerful and influential organizations in the Eastern Kingdoms. It was created to lead a joint effort to explore the Badlands. Which countries make up these Eastern Kingdoms? Simple. The Principality of Mazgarth, here, is in the middle. The Snow Alliance lies to the north. The Kingdom of Galavan to the east, and the New Empire to the south. All friendly, more or less. But the peace is fragile. <laughs> I keep wanting to uh, read these dialogue options out loud. I'm not used to my player characters, actually speaking. What are the organizations you mentioned? The Council is, uh, how to put it, a non-governmental organization, meaning that state governments are not represented to avoid partisanship. Instead, there are delegates from the Guild of Antiquarians, the Tower of Knowledge, the Arcaneum, and the Circle of Denantar. And the Church of Einar guarantees fairness, led by Marshal Beric Sunblaze and Oathkeeper Lyra Keen. What are the Badlands, really? Simply put, they are a monster-ridden, chaotic wasteland that used to be the Elven Empire called Manakalan. It was destroyed about a thousand years ago by the Great Cataclysm. Now, only ruins remain, full of forgotten knowledge, riches, and dangers. I like the uh, emphasis he put on riches. The guy definitely knows how to handle adventurers. I think we know enough now. Thank you. What can you tell us about this place, the Principality? We don't exactly have the time, anyway. 
The Principality of Mazgarth is ruled by Princess Kaiwood Silverflower. We are a wealthy state with fertile lands and the easiest access to the Badlands through a pass called the Copperhead Road. We're in the capital, Caer Kiflin, which was once part of the ancient Manicullen Empire of the High Elves. Hence the magnificent elvish buildings up there in the high town. While we don't have a state religion, all of the major faiths on Solasta are represented here, though we tend to favor Einar, the god of valor and fidelity. Are we going to work for you? Not exactly, no. I'll be your contact with the Legacy Council, which you will serve as deputies. That's why we need to go there and get you sworn in. It actually wasn't that bad. Onward to adventure, my friends. Uh, we should go, don't you think? Very well. Come, gather your things. You're late for your swearing in. Hurry up and wait. The story of my life. The voice acting is obviously a bit, um, wonky. It's very Wasteland 2 in quality, but I do admire the ambition behind trying to implement this sheer quantity of voice acting into what is essentially a budget RPG. I actually find myself wishing I had um, assigned some more aggressive personality traits to some of our characters, especially our dwarf. That would uh, certainly spice the conversations up a little. Looks like we are not quite done with the tutorial just yet. We still have to find our way up to the um, Legacy Council and get a proper briefing on our first real quest. And then after that, I think we've also got a few other minor tutorials about shopping and reputation and such. So, um, you know what? I feel like we've made some decent progress here and I do need to do some fine tuning on our party loadouts. So, uh, Let's go ahead and hit the pause button here. I will uh, take care of our loadouts and find our way up to the Legacy Council, and we'll pick up there next time, as the adventure starts in earnest. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Solasta, Crown of the Magister, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official YouTube channel, the official social media feeds, or the official store pages. As always, links are in the description.